So, the pre-patch is upon us. Shadowlands is pretty close, so it's very likely that the set pre-patch is gonna head towards the end of this month. 29th is my prediction following the pattern of past expansions. Don't quote me on that, but if I was a betting man, that would be my guess. So with that, we're gonna be in a somewhat different pre-patch cycle than any other before, as there's gonna be big, big changes ahead of Shadowlands release. So let's talk about all that is coming and what's not, as Shadowlands specific features will be in a future video. So let's get started. Starting with the most obvious, but always nice to remind everyone, uh, feel free to use the timestamps to skip ahead, the level and item level squish, and everything that will entail for our current characters and any future ones you might want to create. The minute the pre-patch hits, we all gonna be brought down to level 50, with level 60 being the new cap coming in Shadowlands. Your existing characters that are not currently level 120 will be squished down to an appropriate level, for an example, one of my level 70s is now level 27. With that, of course, comes two things, changes to leveling and yet another big number squish to our DPS numbers. Yep another one. Numbers will be squished down to about Wrath levels. This will include your item level. As an example, my 476 DK is now 126, and I'm hitting as hard as my original DK was back in Wrath. Thereabouts. Speaking of which, what happens to all the bazillion expansion zones we currently have? Good question. The magic of scaling will fix that, or rather, chromie time. So creating new characters, and if you're wondering, allied races now start at level 10, DKs and demon hunters start at level 8, yes, I know, kind of weird, but they're gonna reach level 10 like the allied races after they do their little intro quests. So at level 10, you're gonna meet Chromi near your respective embassy, where you can essentially select an expansion to play through. Uh, leveling should be reasonably quick and also means you can follow the full story of an expansion that you've missed without worries of overleveling, which is pretty good. The same treatment will be applied to profession gear, where you can apply or add relics of the past to old items created, buffing its item level up towards 100, depending on the level bracket that you are in, which is equivalent to normal Nyalotha uh, loot drops, which isn't super crazy but not that shabby either for old dated gear. So if you can craft a Storm Herald or a Nightfall or some other cool old school item that will remain powerful through your leveling journey up to Shadowlands. Another cool thing that many of you might be glad about is the removal of the reputation grind on all the allied races. They now only require you to do their respective quests, such as a war campaign for the Makhar or the Kul Tirans, the Argus quests for the Lightforge Draenei or the Suramar questline for the Nightborn and so on, or simply the Vuldun storyline for the Vulpira, so you will finally be able to embrace your inner fury without any big boring grinds. Mm. Similarly to the allied race requirement changes, flying in the old zones like Wad, Legion, will also be removed. I know some people will be very glad about that. Now, starting a new character will also bring something else new outside of Chromie time, as long as it's not an allied race or a hero class. If you're a new player, or as a veteran, you will also be given the option to go through Exile's Reach, which is a new player-friendly zone where you're going to be taught all the basic systems of the game and where you're going to do your first 10 levels. As you can tell by now, the level 10 is the new big dick meta of WoW, you're also going to be able to get your mount then. Anyway, this zone is actually a really cool experience, since I would actually advise if you have some time to kill, to do it when the pre-patch is out. It's pretty fun, really quite immersive little zone to play through, and a really great introduction to the game for new players. Even a very simple tame your new pet hunter class quest was added, which I found very nostalgic from my own experience back in the old days. So that covers all the different leveling changes coming in the pre-patch, and Shadowlands for that matter. So what about gameplay? How is your character gonna play outside of the squish? 
So of course, you're gonna get all the class changes coming in Shadowlands, including many of the unpruned abilities. I bet many of you already went to the PTR to test them out. This will include the big revamps to specs like Shadow Priest, which is awesome, or not so good things, AoE target caps in many of our abilities. Yeah. But do bear in mind that it won't be the full representation of your spec, of how your spec rather, is going to play in Shadowlands. I remember in Legion pre-patch, there was such an outrage for how bad specs were playing without your borrowed powers, back then being artifacts. It sucks, that is true, but it will only be for a month. In Shadowlands, you will get new ranks as a level, which is really cool. Some of them will even change your gameplay, like in Unholy Decays, you get many great and cool things, like on your Gargoyle CD, becoming your current talented option, gaining that little affix to your runic power, or your Apocalypse, granting you runes. So on that alone, will also make Shadowlands leveling more interesting and not the weird mess with negative power growth that was BFA leveling. But on top, there will be Covenant abilities, conduits, soulbinds, and legendaries to fill in the gaps on some specs. So just remember, you're not getting the full picture of your class and spec in the pre-patch. I will also try and put out some big videos covering all the changes soon, so you are all ready. What about essences, corruption, and all those borrowed powers from BFI? What happens to them? Well, when it comes to corruption, that will be completely gone, so it will be a big shock, especially if you like me, with huge stat hamps on my Unholy Decay. But essences and your neck will still work in Azeroth, but not in the Shadowlands zones, as that will grey out. This also means some goofy, crazy things might happen, like double dipping on Magus, pet procs from both Azerite traits, and a changed talent on Unholy Decay that essentially does the same thing. You might find something similar like that in your spec, where Azerite traits got baked into talents or your baseline abilities whilst you are still using the traits, so double dip on that. Havoc Demon Hunters might get a shitload of haste due to this as well, so it will be quite funny for a little while, so enjoy it while it lasts. Right, on to customization changes. Many great ones are also coming in Shadowlands, both for the barber or when creating a new character. You can change your gender at the barber, practically free, which is pretty cool, add a buttload of different little things to your character, and modernizing the game a little bit more for, well, 2020. Still far off from many other MMOs, but you know, it is an old game. There's scars, tattoo options, little thematic things like vines and necklaces, many eye options. Night elves in particular have it great, or blood of void elves for, you know, you being able to create scuffed high elves, or humans or even torrents and trolls have some pretty cool options. Master race orcs, though, don't really get much. I'm so bummed about that, but generally pretty good new options. However, there are some unique things on the barber for, say, druids, where you can specifically select your preferred look for many of your forms. This will include the fire kitty or even glyph forms. And they are not specced locked, so you can be a feral druid or a balanced druid with the fancy werebear form and still have your cool, colorful artifact a kitty form. Pretty awesome. Transmog will also receive a cool new and similar treatment like druid forms, allowing you to transmog any of the legion artifact appearances to any spec, which is really quite awesome for a double flailed warrior or a frost decay rocking the apocalypse artifact weapon as a two-hander or a behem hunter with a marksman bow so you can finally have a quiver. They really need to bring those back, and many more cool things that I'm sure many of you ha will have spent quite a lot of time in. Now, for the main event of this video, how is the pre-patch event gonna play? It's gonna be a scourge event, and I say sort of. So, like the past two events, you're gonna have a little quest line that will lead you into the expansion, and this time around will involve the Argent Crusade and the Scourge, just going to different places, eventually culminating in Ice Crown with that beautiful new skybox 
from the cinematic. And you're gonna do the quests that will open up on a weekly basis, setting again the foundations for Shadowlands release. And by doing the quests, you will also unlock dailies, very reminiscent of the old Argent tournament dailies, uh, pulling a lot of nostalgia tricks. Uh, with those dailies, you're gonna get Argent accommodations that will be able to buy gear of 100 item level, equivalent to the maxed crafted gear from the old expansions with relics of the past or normal Nihilotha, so good enough for alts. Uh, currently, it's still using the BFA Tmog, so I imagine they're gonna add something different on there, uh, but personally, I think it would be pretty cool if we could get the old Tmog uh, that we had back in the Wrath pre-patch event. And we might also get some other flavorful items like in Legion and in BFI, maybe even a mount like the last time again, as a surprise in the last few weeks of the pre-patch. Who knows? You're also going to be able to actively just farm mobs, scourge, to get scourge stones and deliver them for extra accommodations if you want that gear quick. Alternatively, you both have a new world boss to kill, Nathanos, back at his old place in the eastern plaguelands, rewarding 110 gear and rares that randomly pop up, much like the Legion invasion in and around Ice Crown. These bosses are themed around Ice Crown Citadel raid and the dungeons which is pretty awesome, and drop their old gear, though, you know, upscaled to current item level of 100, and higher rarity Scourge Stone for you to deliver for more accommodations and rep. They stay for a little while, by the way, and attackable, uh, giving you enough time to get to them. You also seem to be getting a little events in Ice Crowns, like chilly winds, encouraging you to go to bonfires and huddle up, though they don't feel dangerous at all. I would love to see this actually damaging you in a meaningful way, to actually feel the danger of this cold, dangerous, scourgy place ever encroaching on you, but you don't really feel it. As for the so-called zombie ghoul invasion, it's a much more boring, neutered version now, very, very tamed. Before it was working just like the Wrath event. Uh, plagued boxes popped around town and major cities, plagued vermin started to appear, and you could click on those boxes or kill the infected vermin to get infected and so on, it would turn into a ghoul or, well, get killed by some other ghoul player get turned to a ghoul, start infecting NPCs and players alike to a point everything around would be a huge horde of zombie ghouls, of players and NPCs, causing mindless mayhem, pun intended. However, that is so-called disruptive to the players that don't want to partake, which can be understandable, so now the Shadowlands version is again much more tamed. First, this will happen in waves, apparently so. Boxes, the plagued boxes and plagued vermin still appear at certain times a day, and you can kill them or touch the boxes to transform into a ghoul. But when it comes to infecting other NPCs or players, is much, much harder, as you actually have to kill them to transform them. You cannot simply infect them. You cannot bring other NPC ghouls from other places into towns or cities like easy low-level NPCs that you just infected, it is much more player-driven. It also means a single player can stop the start of an invasion. I tried multiple times, but even me and a couple of other players that wanted to have some silly fun wasn't enough to infect enough NPCs and players needed to get it rolling. We simply got killed way too fast by other players that don't want the hassle of the zombie invasion. And in one hand, I think that's cool, that is in the player's hands, in the player's control, especially if it's a paladin purging as ghouls, but at the same time, that silly dumb fun isn't gonna happen unless you have a big group organized to pull off major infection points, uh, seemingly for now anyway, as they could potentially change that, say, for the last week of the pre-patch or pull something crazy, letting it run wild again, because right now, for a Scourge outbreak and for a Scourge event in general, feels pretty underwhelming, albeit you have a lot of cool nostalgia. Of course, we are still missing the context of the cutscenes that they're still yet to be known, but nothing too crazy is happening so far in the pre-patch event. Personally, I would love to see the Legion pre-patch event, but in Scourge form, with points around the world being infected and invaded, and you would either become a ghoul, join their army, or you would fight them. Alright guys, that covers all the things that are coming in the pre-patch, 
buckle up your seats and get ready for Shadowlands because it is coming pretty soon, so stay tuned for a similar video like this but dedicated to all the new features coming in Shadowlands in a generalized form, both big and small, that doesn't get talked about enough. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.